Peter Obi is the man of the people. I want you to see the moment that Peter Obi caught the attention of the northerners when he told them how he's going to be decisive in his government. I want you to take a look at this video and let me know what you think in the comment section. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and share it with your friends and families. Thank you. We have people who can make it work. It is not possible. We have what it takes. I can tell you we will secure this country. I know what I'm doing, what I'm saying. We will deal with this room. When we deal with this issue of security, security, then we start putting people out of poverty. The more you put people out of poverty, the more you reduce criminality. When people are hungry, but they don't know that nothing will come from, they become criminals. If you give them food, you reduce criminality. It's simple. It's in many countries all over the world. We have different types of agitation today because we have a problem. We are there yesterday. No. Yesterday the country was good. There was profit. There was something to share. So everybody was living peacefully. When there's nothing to share, there's problem. Because the only thing people share is profit, they don't share loss. In loss, they put it. That's where the country is today. We will bring back the country again. And we'll make it work. We will deal with the other issues that are presenting our nation today. Issue of corruption. People have said they will fight corruption. If anybody says you fight corruption, let me tell you where the last opportunity you have to manage public money, how you manage it. I think the Obi was governor of Anambra State for eight years. Go there and show me where their money is missing. I can tell you, I want number one as MDG. The only measure of, the only thing Nigeria signed in year 2000, the spirit of Nigeria is MDG. It was MDG that China mistreated the development agenda I was able to pull 409 million people out of poverty. It was MDG that India the Amendment the Agenda and put 269 people out of poverty. That is what gets them used to pull over 45 million people out of poverty. In Nigeria, we didn't do it and we threw more people into poverty. But Adam Braskett was number one when he ended. Then God be number one, go to our schools. Our schools was closed for two years. One of the candidates mentioned it's the same day everywhere. But today, go number one, we are number one, 2011, 12, and 13. You know, some of you, all I can say, go and verify what we were able to do there. As governor of the state, as governor of the state, I signed over 10,000. Documents for CFOs. Go and ask if you see one land that any other any allocated to B2B, come and start and stop campaigning. Hey. I left when I left the state. When I left the state, I left the National Bank. It's a bank in Nigeria. I left the National Bank 50 million dollars and over 10 billion naira. I left in that one bank, 50 million dollars and over 10 billion naira. I left in Fidelity Bank, 50 million dollars and over 10 billion naira. Until today, Anambra has never paid me one naira as gratuity or pension. I left eight years ago. You can go and verify it. So if anybody said you buy corruption, let me tell us how you manage public money before. I was chairman of Security and Defense Commission, go there and ask them whether one day I took student allowance or they gave me one hour. There are places. So if anybody said you're going to fight corruption, fighting corruption is easy. If you are not stealing, your wife and children are not stealing, those around you are not stealing, you're losing by 70%. We will fight corruption. We will fight it to the same steel. Today, people are stealing government money. People are stealing. Nigeria is the only country. Nigeria is the only country in OPEC that is not.
everything is quota. Apart from Venezuela, because of sanctions. And why are we not doing it? Because our oil is stolen. Who can steal oil? Nobody here can steal oil. People steal oil, are people in government. For you to steal oil, a ship has to come in. Somebody will authorize that ship to come in. Somebody will authorize it to go out. It is not oil, it is not sweet. You put it in your pocket. And the, the waste is too much. We have a deficit, a crippling deficit. We have a crippling deficit, deficit, deficit of our budget. And we are allowing people to steal our oil. It's ahead of us. Between January, between January of this year, to the 30th of April, Nigerian total revenue was 1.6 trillion. Our total expenditure was 4.7 trillion. We had 3.1 trillion deficit. And people are still in our oil. It can't continue. We will stop it. Just to show you. And this is our deficit. Let me show you what we lost in two months in oil. In July, our total production was 1 million 83,000. That means we every day we are losing 717,000. Multiply by that one day is 22 million 227. The average price of oil in that month was 110. If you multiply, we lost 2 billion 445 million dollars. Let's just leave 750 and multiply 550. It's 1 trillion. 344 billion, 750 million dollars. That's what we lost in one month. In the month of August, it was worse. In the month of August, it was worse. We were producing 975,000 barrels. So we are losing 825. So over the one month, we lost 25 million barrels. At 100 naira average, we lost 2.5 billion dollars about 1.4. So in two months, Nigeria lost, we, we lost, we lost uh, nearly five billion dollars or equivalent of 2.8 trillion naira. Which country can operate like that? It cannot. We are paying subsidy. Subsidy is organized crime. There's no way Nigeria can consume the number of money we pay in our subsidy. That is the money we want to save and throw into productive sector in the north and get this unemployed youth that is giving everybody problem to have something to do and would reduce their criminality. It is doable. It is not rocket science. It's happening in other nations. It can happen in Nigeria. So my dear people, all I plead is that yes, as we know, as we of people goes around, there's a lot of news. There's a lot of things which I'm not here to defend A or B. But anything that I want, you want me to clarify, I'll clarify. But I want to assure you, today, I'm a Nigerian. I believe in Nigeria. I want to give Nigerians hope. I want to ensure that if you send the North Africa, the highest out of school children, I want to reduce it. I can deal with this. Why? Those children that decided not to go to school have learned Quran and work with the Islamic centers and Muslims to teach the skills and put the skills and read them at the point. If they can learn Quran, they are very intelligent. And I'll teach the skills. And if I teach them skills, I'll support them because I'm going to put money in micro, small businesses. They'll have a business to do. They'll have a future. I want to give them a future. We'll change them. There's a lot we can do to change here. And I'm committed to it. And I want you to tell what I'm doing. And people said to me, what is the manifesto? I said, don't worry. I will give you manifesto. But I'm telling you what I'll do. And I want you to take it. And I want you to hold me responsible. I will be in charge. I and Daddy will be in charge. Nobody will find out one thing. We have the physical, we have the mental and physical energy to do this job. And we are not going to Let nobody worry about that. I can tell you, we work as a family, we work as a team. Every single day, when I saw him, 
Nigeria and are saying that they are not choosing you because I'm looking for somebody from the north. No, I'm choosing you because I'm passionate that whoever I'm going to do this will be as passionate as I am to turn around the north and tell them, I keep saying it, the future of Nigeria depends on the north. I will work it. Because I want to be able to say, I want to turn the entire country into a farm land and use Kenya and Kamuna as processing centers. And you will see it happen. Kaduna here is for the Kaduna here is for the six thousand square kilometers of land. Kaduna Kaduna is two times I can tell you countries that are that tiny. We can't go on this way. And that is what I want to solve. That is what we want to change. I assure you, I'm sure you have questions. Please feel free to ask me any question. Feel free. I'm here to clarify and tell you who I am. But most important, you know that this is Peter Obi. I'm a Nigerian. I believe in Nigeria. I live for Nigeria. Every day, all I want now is the opportunity to create a new future for Nigeria. Next year's election, I'm pleading with you, should not be based on the primitives we used before. I don't want you, we are not having a new MD for this company called Nigeria. I don't want you to hire people based on tribe. Please, don't hire people based on religion. Don't hire people based on, on my tongue. Don't hire people based on anything. I'm telling you, all this is what the elites used to confuse us. To keep us where we are. No. There's no tribe that is enjoying anything today. The people in the north don't buy bread cheaper than people in the south. The poor people in the north are poor. The poor people in the south are poor. There's no interrupted light in the north. There's no one in the north that is lacking in the south. There's no in the south that is lacking in the north. All of them are suffering. There's no place anybody buys anything cheap because of religion. I'm a Christian. The South Trump was in London. I lived my life in London. Went to the best schools there from Oxford to Cambridge. To, is it the, the South Trump was in London was admitted by the Queen. The Queen is not a Muslim. In Dubai, I'm a Christian. A Catholic. Catholic. If you go to Dubai, the Catholic Church in Dubai, the land and the church was built by any of Dubai. So let nobody say, give us the excuse again. What do we want now is progress. What do we want now is to employ our youth. Next year's election must be based on character we can trust. What we are telling now is listen to all of us. All of us are going to have a well written manifesto, a well written document to we'll read out, a well written this. But what we are telling now is who among us will you trust? It is a trust issue. Who among us will you trust? We want a character we can trust next year. Who is more competent? Election next year must be on character we can trust. It must be in competence, it must be in capacity and commitment to start doing the right thing for you. Thank you. We must stop this abuse of our country based on premodal excuses. It is hurting us and you take a just revenge on our children. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is again the ground rule. Our ground rule has been violated. Our distinguished speaker, we appreciate you. And we thank you for this uh, wonderful session. Let me now hand over to the panel. Mr. Chairman, I will uh, 
allow me to invite the deputy chairman to kickstart the panel discussion so that we now go to orders to continue. Mr. Peter Obi, you are now available for questioning to start with the panel. Thank you very much, sir. Your Excellency, the presidential candidate and his very mate. One of the objectives of this forum is to provide a platform to a candidate to explain certain issues about him or about what he wants to do. Now, I want to start rolling the ball rolling by Emily. Mr. Asa, we grill people when they come here. Now, I want to... You said something in your um, uh, in the presentation that you signed so so and so number of COOs. There was none from uh, for you and your visit. But how many where for people from the northern side of the country or even other parts of the country, how many? And secondly, you were reported to have asked northerners to carry ID cards or tags of identification. This is a platform for you to talk about them and explain issues. Thank you. Sir, do you want to take all the questions or you want to answer all of them as they come? Let, let me answer them as they come, sir, remember. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vice Chairman. Eh? Co-Chairman, sorry. Co-Chairman, I apologize. Let me, uh, the Co-Chairman has a very valid question. And that question is important. Co-Chairman, let me tell you, they've asked me this question, you know, the first person to ask me this question was Dr. Dati. And I said to him, my brother Dati, go to Anambra State, go to the whole of Nigeria, spend your money, spend everything. If you see anybody who is carrying an ID card, and he said it from the north, while you live in Anambra State, or anybody who tell you, this is here, I'm a treated people from other parts of Nigeria, while I was governor, come, I will stop campaigning. I will withdraw and go home. <laughs> Number two, it's important that I take all this. When I was coming in here, when I came in here now, Somebody told me, he said, Peter, your brother, my brother, the governor of Kaduna State, said that he came to my state and I detained him. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, good when you ask that when this is happened, you clarify them. Number one. In my eight years of being governor, in my eight years of being governor, only in the first three months did I have a commission. Three months. And that's because I met the person. At the time the governor said this, it was during the election, the police commissioner then, the police was on my power that was in Africa. Government was PDP and APC. Tell me how an African person will issue order for somebody to be detained. Even me was detained in my local government. And I was working for But however, all of us I committed is that when they asked me, I said, that's how they treat everybody that I wouldn't be in Kaduna on day of election. That was the only thing. And it took the there's no way I'm not a, I cannot do that. Coach 
chairman, I never asked anybody to carry ID. As governor of, as governor of Alhambra State, I have the best ADC in Nigeria, the best policeman. My, my, my ADC, one man, is from Kano. He's the best policeman to today that I've ever met. He's from Kano. Who we, we will I give you order? Who we'll come on and go and we'll give order on his head? So how will I tell Mohammed who lives in my house every day and close to his family? I get up and say, Mohammed, I want to live with your people. And he will say that. Call my agency today, I'll give you his phone number. He's the best policeman, he's still a policeman. He's here still now. And he will tell you. So when people there, this of me is black. 2019, I was vice president. No, I, I was good man. Now I want to be president. I become bad man. I did not do anything wrong. I want to change Nigeria. Land, yes. When I said I signed CFO, I didn't say I gave people land. Remember what I said? All those land that I signed are people who are applied. I never want their said. I gave A or B land. I put land myself. I said, so I'm going to give you phone number of the of Muslims in Anambra State. Ask them their relationship with Peter Obi. And they will tell you, if there's anything, I keep saying it, Unza Rice in Kanu. I told, I told that he, and I told La. I said, Unza Rice went to, he went to look for loan. In, in three months, they didn't give him. He came to us. I said, we'll finance him. He's the biggest rice farmer. He's in Kano. <laughs> and I discuss with him every day on the way forward of farming. And he knows my commitment to what I'm saying about the land here. So it has nothing to do anybody who is telling you this. Just like I told you, in 2019, I was a good man. The only offense I committed now is that I want to be president. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me agenda. Let me give to uh, Jia Sadatu. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, I've seen you in pictures. I'm seeing you face to face for the first time. Your Excellency, if you look at the picture above your head, it's the picture of Samad Bello, the father of Northern Nigeria. He has taught us to love our Muslims and Christian brothers and sisters the same. As a Muslim household woman, how will you make me comfortable to have a government that Peter will be the president? How will I be comfortable? Because you have social media people have to do a lot of work to convince us that you are not anti -love. Thank you, sir. What, what you are saying, man, I've told you this, and now I'm tell you what I'm going to say again. These, all these things that came out now, were they not there in 2019? Because all the all, all they're te they telling me now is, is this offense started in 2021 when I declared to be president. But let me tell you, one of the greatest investments I want to do is in women. Today, a basket case. A country today we can refer to a basket case. Few years ago, a country we can, we can use. Excuse me. A country we can use as a basket case today, compared to Nigeria. Few years ago, is doing well today. 
because of the power of his women. And which country is that? Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a country of 163 million people. In 2010, I was in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, their per capita income was $707. Today, it's three times that, about 2,300. As of 2010, Bangladesh, uh, the Bangladesh was $747 per capita. Nigeria was 2,260. Today, we are 1,980. They have moved to, so they've done three times and we've lost about 11%. And what is Bangladesh's greatest export? Clothing. They did 36 billion worth of clothing. And if you go in the clothing industry in Bangladesh, they have all the, they have nearly 8 to 10 million people in involved in manufacturing of clothing and clothing related current distance, 50% are women and they are home. And you know whether you like it or not, we have some no sense of respect. If women are determined to do anything, they must get it. The very industrial. I work with them in the bank. Other women over 40 percent. My chief of staff was a woman. My deputy governor was a woman. My finance commissioner was a woman. Accountant guy was a woman. Head of service was a woman. Commissioner of education was a woman. Commissioner of local government was a woman. I believe in it. So I can assure you, Mom, I'll take care. I will look. If there's anything I can say, and I want you to take it on tape. I will unlock the knot. Because I know what this country is waiting for. We want to feed ourselves. We can't feed ourselves by importing food. We can't feed ourselves by our young ones being productive at home. They have to do something. I will make them productive. The women will be there. We are going to do something for them. And I assure you, when I went to the flower fields in Kenya, we were one women. So they will be there. They will walk. Thank you. Hey, okay. Um. Honorable uh, Peter Obi, the same thing, Your Excellency. I'm meeting you for the first time. You've dealt a lot on resources. My questions would be on resources. There is urban demand for rural land, and there is also rural demand for urban land. Northern Nigeria is very vast. What are your plans for, number one, urban renewals? in view of the decay of some of our cities. Two, what are your plans for, uh, for rural development in view of the fragile ecosystem of northern Nigeria? Vis-a-vis -vis the rich, finite, and infinite resources that you have just spoken of. What are those secrets, what are the windows that we would love to hear from you. Thank you. If I understand it, for me, you know when I said it, I said we'll do the three back. The three banks we are going to deal with are said Bank of Agriculture, Bank of Industry, and Bank of Infrastructure. Remember, we have an urban bank in Nigeria. We will make those banks work 
for urban renewal. The road to rural infrastructure due to the poverty, we are going to use the resources of government to do it. You need to see what was done in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, there was no big building, beautiful buildings in the cities, but they have rural roads to the farm, rural roads to the villages where women were doing cutting, where women were sewing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the resources of government to deal with the rural infrastructure. Open renewal will be done by involving urban bank, involving infrastructure that people have to pay. Because those who live in urban areas, it's like you want to talk about power. There is places we have to do power subsidize. There's no place where people have to, to pay the reprice because they can afford it. I remember. When we change the economy and there's growth, people have more disposable income, unlike today. Thank you. My name is Babiola Bamuri Togo. Let me first of all agree with you that the North needs unlocking. And in the same breath, disagree with you that the North is poor. If the North is, if the North is poor, we wouldn't be hosting the most number of people that are not indigenous to the North. Because of the wealth that is in the North. That is why you have everybody from every part of this country living here. And again, to preface my question, I think part of it is if the farmers of Saminaka will stop farming maize, most of our flower maize in Nigeria will close down. Just Saminaka era. These are unorganized, unmechanized, non-commercial farmers. So the note is rich. Like I said, I agree with you in this unlocking. When you were talking, when you were making a presentation, I was hoping that I would have an equal number of time, an equal number of minutes, or maybe to engage you on a different platform. Because the question is in my mind. If I have to ask them on this platform to use a word that is very that you may be overwhelmed with, I may be excommunicated. And on this platform. Now, when you are talking, I was just listening to what you didn't say. I'm trying to listen to what you are not saying. And it is the topical issue today in northern Nigeria, or in most parts of this country. The issue of irredentism, bigotry. I don't feel safe as a northerner. I can't load my cattle from Yola and take it to Onitsha Market or Anambra State. That may be the beginning of my economic regulation because the truck and my animal may be burned down, including the life of the driver and his mates. I have seen uh, Fulani home states were banned, the people trapped on the streets and lynched. I'm a Fulani man and I'm talking as a Fulani man and a Northerner. That's why I say I would have loved to engage you on a different platform where we may discuss these things. Now, please respect, you understand what I'm saying? Respect what yourself. Saying? What do you have? You didn't tell me anything to make me feel that I'll be safe in a Nigeria that you are a leader. Thank you very much. Agree, let me tell you. Let me. Hello, I want us to listen. Let me tell you, sir. I'm actually. I'm actually inclined 
to have that discussion with you. As a, as a leader, as somebody who wants to serve, let me tell you, people, there's two, two most important ingredients you need in leadership is listening and learning. People must learn to listen and learn. What he said is very important. What he said is critical to our future. So he didn't make anything. I remember what I said when I had a question. I said, ask me all questions. Today in Nigeria, there's problems everywhere. When I spoke about here, I spoke about north. I didn't say, remember what I said. I said, the north is the greatest assets of the Nigeria. So that shows the richest. All I said is I don't in a lot. That I'm going to unlock it. That's number one. Number two. I said it in all different forums. When people ask me about architects from various parts of Nigeria, whether it's in Oduduwa in, in Southwest, FPOB or this in North or this, let me say it categorically. In a democracy, in a democracy, you dialogue, you discuss, and you consult. You must be by consensus. I'm going to dialogue with anybody who is agitating, who is not happy. I must exhaust reason. And when I exhaust reason, I'll deal with it. I'll be charged. But I'm not going to I'm not going to rule people by military might. I'm going to give anybody space. If you say you're not there, you're not happy, I'll come and see you. If you say from the north, I'll come and see you. I'll say with everybody. But I can tell you, the Nigeria that I am that you serve, everybody will be safe. If anybody do the type of thing you're doing, we'll deal with it. Nobody will do it. Because we would have given everybody a chance to see that there's a new face, that there's a new beginning, that we are trying to build a country that is united, a country where we love each other. I own businesses today. I own businesses today run by people in the north. If we, so I own businesses today run by the people in the north. I own a business today run by Northerner. That gives me every year a profit that can make me live. And the person running it is a Northerner. So if they are run by business, why not? I have my colleagues all over the place. I have Northerners that do business with today. I just named, I can name four or five businesses in the north here, which I have good investment in. I don't want to risk it. So I know it isn't. Anybody can tell you anything, and it's easy to say, oh, this person is this, or this person is that. When you go and tell the person, like, like I said, bring one person with ID card. It doesn't exist. Bring one person with this. It doesn't exist. But it's easy to do it. And I say, if all this was there, nobody would have seen it in 2019. But nobody saw it there. Until now, it came up because my position changed. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, our distinguished audience, be patient with us. Everybody that has come here, they are open to interrogation yes. and they have declared and Mr. Peter will be has said categorically that they should ask him any question. So before I call Dr. Akim Babane, let me give one testimonial. In February 2010, I was at Government House Oka and Mr. Peter will be declared to us with my boss that I went with that Anytime the Anambra big boys are moving, 
with their convoy. He stepped aside until they passed. Is that a weakness or a strength? Mr. Putabi will add value to that in further discussions. Now, Dr. Akim Babame, before I give open the floor to other members and some questions here with me, can you uh, say something, sir? Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Excellency. Excellency, if you become president of Nigeria, if you become president of Nigeria, you will be the first democratically elected Igbo person. The North has voted for non-Northerners before. We voted for non-Northerners. We voted for Abiola from the South. We voted twice for Obasanjo. We voted for Jonathan. So voting for a non-Northerner is not a big issue for us. To be perfectly honest with you, the biggest fear for the North is that your success as president will be the price to be paid for peace and security from the Southeast. That is the impression we get, and it worries us. That unless you become president, there will be no peace in the southeast or parts of Nigeria. That is an impression that is unfortunate. I know you. My younger brother is your enemy, so I know enough about your ticket. But this is the north. Please kindly stand up and tell the north. Tell the North, assure us, assure us that your ambition, your candidature, your credibility has nothing to do with the demands that unless you have an evil president, there will be no peace in Nigeria. And two, that those people who associate with you, the ambition of evil people for the presidency, have a right to do that, but you are going to be a Nigerian president. And when you become a Nigerian president, everybody in this country will identify with you. Please stand up and assure the North that this is the case, or give us assurances that will make us feel safe and secure under your leadership. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. For this question, after the last question, cause the lot. Let me make it obvious and very, very simple. One, I have never, and I say it anywhere, please do not vote for me because I'm an Igbo man. I am running this election for the office of the President of Nigeria as a Nigerian who happens to be an Igbo man. I'm not denying where I'm coming from. I'm running it as a Nigerian. And I will live and defend the Constitution of Nigeria. I will govern with the Constitution of Nigeria. I will be just. I will be fair and I will relate cordially with every part of Nigeria. Those who are actually fearing about me today, I can tell you, will be the greatest beneficiary of my presence. All they need is to trust me. You voted everybody, which you said. But you have not voted me, Peter, if I may stand from that side. That is the change you will see. I'm here for a new Nigeria. I'm not here for I want to I want Nigerians to believe in Nigeria. Uh, today we have Nigeria, but we don't have Nigerians. 
Without asking me who carry their pastor with pride. I want every youth in Nigeria to carry his pastor with pride. I want my children who have been to the best schools in the world to say they have a friend from Van Kanu. I said this year I have an ADC from Kanu and I was proud of him. And I speak to him every day. I didn't say, go and ask the AG. When he asked me, who do you want as your ADC? I said, I want a good policeman. I didn't tell him I want another opinion. I wanted a policeman. And he gave me one from Mohammed from Kanu. And we lived together. We were not quarreling. I can name you my best friends today are from the north. And I said, in my business, the biggest and most hardworking person is in the north. So, what a minute. Where is it all this division came from? It came because the elite conspiracy, those who were not qualified, brought this in in order to sustain themselves in office. And I want to remove it so I can create a level playing field for people who are qualified. So the rest are shown. And I said here, in Kaduna, which of you will be just Every side of Nigeria will know for once there's a president who is in charge of Nigeria. And I'll be everywhere. I'll visit everywhere. I've been to those years that as president, within the first one year, I must visit and sleep in every state of Nigeria. So I can hear, the, I can hear what they want to tell me and what I want to solve. And I'll solve it. It is not going to be easy. Nigeria has problems that it's not going to be easy to solve. It's going to be difficult. But I have what it takes to start the journey. And I'm urging you, do not listen. These people, all the people you are seeing have tried it before. I'm not going to remind you like people do in Nigeria. When I got into office, what I saw, or that this man caused it, we are not going to hire somebody to remind of our past. The past is gone. I'm going to deal with the future, and I'm going to solve it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Director General Support Center Foundation, and the one other person before I called the vice presidential candidate to uh, have his words before, because time of Margaret is fast approaching, and uh, we don't want to. Uh, keep you beyond time. Vidi, can you, can you come here? Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi. Uh, the question I want to ask you is direct, even though it is a follow-up to the question of Dr. Hakim Baba Ame. My question is, sincerely speaking, why should the North trust you? Why should the North trust you when you have never or not, to my hearing, condemned the seat at home on Monday in the Southeast? Why should the North trust you when, even just recently, your campaign a council that you constituted, even in Sokoto and several states in the north, the chairman of your campaign organization were Igbo men. Why should you not trust you when I have not had you? They have to say this somewhere, but I have not had you categorically condemn IPO, Eastern Security Network, and their activities. Thank you. I agree with the. Thank you very much for the direct question. I answer them one after the other. You've not been following my campaign. That's all I can say. One is that Eastern Security Network was formed by government of the 
Eastern states. These are the governors who fund security things. How can I go and condemn them? I have spoken about cities at home, and I can tell you, there was even a place they mentioned me. You can go, like I said, anything I say, go and verify. Now, let me tell you. Okay. It's uh, presidential election council, which you said I presidential committee uh, council, cafe council, which you said I consulted, is interesting. Is the party chairman in Kaduna here? Chairman, yes, sir. were you in the meeting when I spoke to chairman in Abuja? What did I say? You said you are never in I said I didn't put one member on that list. He was there. And after that, and after that, I would tweeted and said there's certain animal list that is unacceptable. I tweeted it and it will be ratified. But you see how people say that eh? the one which I consulted, not one person there came from me. That is party matter. When party do things, I just leave that I'm responsible. I take it as my responsibility. And I said I will dialogue with everybody. That's what I said now. So what you said is in order. I agree with you. I said I will dialogue with every agitator, I don't like it. It is important. If anybody says he's not happy, I've told you about campaign council. Everything that I do, I do it with all sense of responsibility. And that, like I said, he knows he can tell you a bit more about our relationship, which today he knows, and he tells people, say, listen, I've been with this man for a few months. It is totally different. Yes, and uh, I've lived in a circumstance where there's people who not want you. And they come up with those sorts of things to make sure that you have done this or do this. No, I condemn everywhere there's wrongdoing. I have never condoned wrongdoing anywhere in Nigeria. And I will not condone it. It doesn't matter because I believe that we can sort all this out and we have to. And all this thing we are bringing out is what will make us a better United Nigeria if somebody like me serve tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, one of our elders, uh, Ladi Ayakwande, that you are very aware all one of the oldest northern elders want to ask one or two questions before I enjoy invite the vice presidential candidate to come and talk to us. Thank you, sir. But before he ask his question, I have two questions here. One on the infrastructure deficit in Tentico about it. And the other one the incessant flooding in the north. And um, your policy on, uh, on okay. Your Excellency, uh, no, I don't understand. No. Your Excellency. With me, it appears the emphasis of your campaign has been based on the youth, and in my part of Nigeria, every church now is only talking about. Peter will be as if he is the only Christian contestant. 
this questions of mine, what are you going to get a camp, uh, a camp that will put the elderly people in Nigeria? Because you have not been talking about all the time people are talking about the youth. that we are having problems on my part of Nigeria about you being a Christian. We want a president that will hold Nigeria together. We want a president that will look after the youth and the elderly men. But it appears as if the emphasis of your campaign has been based on this too. That will break me. No, I need to say beside my daddy, the one I'm talking. Daddy. Thank you. If you are above 60 years, we are used to be on this side. So I'm already on this side. That's why I'm not talking about that us. When I say the greatest assets, the greatest physical assets of Nigeria is the vast land on the north. The greatest human assets of Nigeria is youth. Today, all we need is to take care of you. Unless we support the youth, they will earn revenue to support their parents. What is happening now? Like Please be patient. We don't have the time. So I need to what, what is happening now like is that parents pay their children's school fees. Their children leave school and they are at home and they are feeding them. That is dangerous. Because when they get home, Without anything to fall back on, they'll destroy everything. So in their productive age, we want to make them productive. Yes. And it's when they make them productive that they can look after the elders. And that's what we're talking. We cannot abandon the elders. Or what you're talking about, all other things you're talking is my opponents are meant on painting me every day black. All I ask is that I was vice presidential candidate in 2019. All these things they say I am today. Where was I yesterday? I served with notable Nigerians. As chairman of several companies. As chairman of those companies. Not enough are there. Go ask Jaramagoro. Who nominated me to be chairman of Fidelity Bank? Is an other now. I sat on a board with him. There's so many other you can ask about me today. But they are bent on venting me black because I'm campaigning to be president. But I'm telling Nigerians, my presidency will change Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you, sir. Everybody will be happy with it. Thank you. Uh, the vice presidential candidate, can you one minute round up for us so that we can go? And then the chair to make our presentation immediately after the vice presidential candidate. Thank you very much. Normally, it's a ritual that uh, the compendium of Northern Position will be presented by the chairman of the panel and then we will receive the vote of thanks and then we will have our national anthem. Thank you very much. All protocols respectfully observed, my leaders, my chairman. Three qualities of the northerner. The northerner is known to accept 
the will of my almighty Allah. The northerner is known to uphold the truth. The northerner is known for promoting fairness, equity, and justice. This has historically been our trademark. Very briefly, the stability of Africa is a subject in world affairs. The stability of Nigeria is a factor in African affairs. And indeed, the stability of Northern Nigeria is the peace and prosperity of Nigeria. Ten things I will say about Peter Obi. Ariwa, the North is safe with Peter Obi because he has the history. Ariwa is secure with Peter Obi because he has the legacy. Ariwa is prosperous with Peter Obi because he has a proven record. Ariwa will be educated under Peter Obi because he has the capacity. Arewa will be united under Peter Obi because he has the character. Arewa will be integrated under Peter Obi because he has the capacity. Arewa will be productive under Peter Obi because he has the experience and commitment. Arewa will be industrialized under Peter Obi because he has the knowledge. Arewa will be stable because Peter Obi has control. Above all, Arewa will be peaceful under Peter Obi because he has the magic. My leaders, brothers and sisters, it is better to have a leader, not a ruler, a leader that is thirsty to make you happy, a leader that is in a hurry to please you than to have a leader who thinks he wants you because he has his own. Peter will be is that leader. Nigeria has never had it this good. And I ask all of us not to throw this golden opportunity away. Nigeria has never had it this good. A combination of a President Peter Obi and the meaning of a President Peter Obi is that Nigeria has united. Once we unite, that is the beginning of the end of our problems. Brothers and sisters, let us not throw this golden once in the nation history opportunity away. This is the time for a new Nigeria. This is the time to go with Peter Obi. This is the time to go to Peter Obi. I thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I invite uh, the chairman to make the presentation of our compendium to the presidential candidate. And I have the honor to uh, immediately have you to have a group photograph with the uh, panel members and steering committee, while our father, the co chair, uh, was there in Katina, will give the vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Can you give me a vote of thanks? Uh, thank you. Let me use the opportunity to thank the presidential candidates and to many mate and their team for coming over here. Our elders our elders were been here throughout the day and throughout the program and all those who have come we won't send them the press and the security agency and the organizing committee and the anchor in particular we want to say a very good thank you and we wish everybody the best yeah we, a, a, a safe return to his or her destination thank you very much indeed we, we are going to have uh, the national anthem as we have the food photograph with members of the steering committee and uh, elders, we like to have the elders, so I can join with them.
Members of Standing Committee, please come up for the photo call. Yes, National Anthem. to subscribe to my channel like this video and share it with your friends and families thank you